Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarter Studio. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Content creation, specifically for Magic or just in general, is a very interesting topic. There are a lot of viewers, listeners out there that might be aspiring content creators but don't really know where to start. There's a lot that really goes into it that the viewer or the listener doesn't necessarily see. There's a lot of hours in the day that you are working really hard to kind of get your content out there and make sure that it's up to the standard that people expect. So with me on the show today is Daniel from Quest for the Jank Lord, and we're going to be talking about content creation, his story, and how he became a content creator, and potentially how you can get started if you're aspiring to be one as well. So hello, Daniel. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for being on the show. So before we get into our discussion today, a couple things. So first off, just some small things that really help the channel. Like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Um, also, we're up as a podcast now, um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. If you subscribe and review, it really helps the channel grow. Again, just some small, tiny things that you can do to help. Another small thing that you can do is if you are buying decks or individual individual cards, make sure you're using those affiliate links in the description. Uh, if there are a deck tech, uh, it's going to have it in the um, the actual deck list will be one of those links. But there's also a general link that you can use too. I believe it's bit.ly slash commanders quarters. But I'll have it down here in post-production too, so you can see it right there. Uh, and it'll be in the description as well. Um, Play mats and merchandise on thecommandersquarters.com. Again, every single play mat. Um, <laughs> yeah, right here. I'll show it real quick and I'll have to put it back down. It's going to be go. great. Yeah. Woo. Um, is really, it really helps support the show. Everything, um, all the play mat sales and merchandise sales go back into helping to improve uh, the setup, the studio, the equipment that I'm using uh, in future episodes. Uh, helps get new series out as well. Um, and then finally, uh, of course, I could not do this without my patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support. You've been with me there from the beginning, and I just could not do any of this without you. This would not be possible. So thank you all. There are plenty of different uh, rewards and tiers, so go ahead and check that out at patreon.com. Um, I'm going to put a link again in the description below too. So now let's get into the main topic though. So Daniel, you have a YouTube channel yes. called Quest for the Jank Lord. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, so it is a budget EDH gameplay channel with kind of a narrative shell. Um, it's about four dudes who sold their souls to a demon for unlimited booster packs. Okay. Uh, they totally didn't read the fine print, though, and those booster packs were all fallen empires. <laughs> Which is not a good set to give booster packs from. Not the greatest. Um, <laughs> and now they're stuck in the demon's nether realm for all eternity to play jank EDH, unless they find a way to escape, but that looks pretty unlikely right now. Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll have to stay tuned to see if that yes, ever happens. Indeed, yeah. Good luck. That's awesome, though. Yeah, um, if you haven't seen Quest for, the Jank Lord, Quest for the Jank Lord yet, I highly recommend it. Uh, I found them a while back and just could, I binged all the episodes that I could, and, and I'm always waiting for new content to, to see how the guys are doing down in, uh, in the nether realm. So Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. Um, let's see. So uh, let's get into the main topic, though. Now that we know uh, Daniel's backstory, or not backstory, but um, we're going to be learning that. All of it. <laughs> all of it. Um what does it take to be a content creator? That's kind of what we're going to talk about in general today. So again, as I mentioned before, there's a lot that goes into content creation that the viewers or listeners might not know about. Um, if I could make an episode every single day of the week, I would. Um, I'm sure Daniel feels the exact same oh, way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it's just not possible to uh, to, to do that without... Um, yeah, I mean, it's just not possible to do that at all. Uh, not promising. <laughs> no, never, no, not no, promising anything like that. No. Neither of us are. Yeah. Uh, but basically, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of long days, a lot of long hours, a lot of hard work that goes into it to get up to that kind of standard um, that people expect. So with Daniel today, we're going to be learning about uh, da uh, Daniel's journey in the Quest for the Jank Lord channel and kind of learning how you got to where you're at right now and potentially how others can, uh, or who are aspiring content creators can get there as well. Um, so we're just going to go through a couple different questions. We're going to bounce off each other. Uh, we've got a script here. No, a script. Sorry. We've got an outline here. Uh, but um, yeah, there might be some um, some back and forth that happens as well, too. We might just go off script, too. So, ooh. Ooh. All right. So uh, first question, how long have you and the Jank Lord crew been together? Well, uh, as a group, we've been playing together since 2017. Uh, but uh, Tim and I have been friends since high school. Um, sorry. Um, Joe and I did theater in college, and then John and Sean and I have uh, were roommates in college. Nice. Uh, you probably know most of those names. Sean is the wheelmaster. 
Spoiler. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's that's a yeah. Bit of a so you, you'll probably never see his face or, he actually, or hear his actual voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, never. Yeah, um, but yeah, uh, John and Joe have been playing Magic the longest. They uh, introduced me to draft in Shadows over Innistrad. I got super into that, which led to Commander. Soon after that, Tim joined, um, and Sean com- kind of completed the play group in uh, around uh, Commander 2017. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So five in the play group is a pretty good number. You know, yeah. one guy can't come and you got, you know, your your regular exactly. four. Or you if you have five, then you can always play, you know, some of the alternative ones as well. You got star, you've got, you know Right. You yeah. Know, Emperor, that kind of stuff mm-hmm. too. So yeah. but yeah, on Quest for the Jank Lord, it's it's um four of you. Mm-hmm. And then obviously yeah. the Wheelmaster is not I have not seen him play yet in any episodes. Right. Not yet. So yeah. potentially. Keep, yep. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Hold him to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. All right. Uh, second question. So it's kind of an off the wall idea. I, I loved it. As soon as I saw it, I knew I, I just loved the channel. I loved the episode. <laughs> Sweet. Where did the idea for Quest for the Jank Lord come from? Well, it's um, kind of a multifaceted story. Uh, it started uh, back in 2017. Uh, we released our first episode in September 2018. Uh, Tim came up with this idea of trying random commanders on like a hyper budget Mm -hmm. um in kind of an attempt to stop the arms race that was kind of happening you know john and joe that can happen yeah being more enfranchised players had a bigger collection Mm -hmm. and were just better players and probably still are uh but there was just yeah this arms race feeling and tim kind of felt like he was way behind so had this cool idea of random commander on a budget so um we tried that we uh Pulled our random commanders, decided on the 79 cents or less thing. People have asked about that, like where that number came from. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to say that there's a big meaning to it, but (laughs) not really. We were Ferris Bobble was 79 cents. Yeah, yeah. there we go. That's what it was. Yeah. I think we were on Goldfish and looking at, you know, different prices. And it was like, oh, a lot of good cards are over, Mm -hmm. you know, 80 cents or up. So, anyways, we did that. Um, I I had Yasova. um, Joe had Audric. Tim had Pia and Kieran. And poor John pulled. Jiru with eyes. Uh, open. Yeah, let, let's just read that yeah, one really read, quick. I mean, I'm gonna. I'll put these up on the screen for those of you that are yeah. watching on YouTube yeah. uh, for the podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I want to make sure that you understand who who this commander is and why he might not work on a budget. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Jiru with with eyes open is a four three human warrior with vigilance that costs three white white. Uh, when uh, he enters the battlefield. You may search your library for a Planeswalker card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. If a source would deal damage to a Planeswalker you control, prevent one of that damage. So I'm assuming there just aren't too many good um, mono-white uh, Planeswalkers that are in the budget. And also mono-white is just known as, or considered by many to be the weakest color uh in in commander right yeah and war of the spark wasn't out yet so you didn't have the wonder yep. i don't even know if the wonder is below that uh, yeah but um anyways yeah and you know we we're like john you can mulligan we have one mulligan you could use it and mm-hmm. he's just like he was just like no i'm gonna build <laughs> I'm gonna, the deck I'm gonna make it work yeah i'm gonna make this work um it didn't work <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, but i mean if you're yeah. spending you know a budget prices on that and you know you know buying a budget you know 15 20 dollar deck or whatever it is yeah, you know yeah. you're, you're able to kind of take those chances and yeah. say like you know i'm just gonna build this i'm gonna have fun with it and it is what it is yeah yeah and i really uh, i applaud john for that that's kind of you know he's he's a very enthusiastic man and um yeah it, it, was, it was really fun but joe really um joe really crushed us honestly like it who, was, did, who did joe have again he had audric lunark marshall okay, let's, yeah let's read yeah, that one real quick that one that's, up. yeah that's actually another mono white commander but slightly better Sli- a little <laughs> better slightly just slightly Okay, so Audric Lunark Marshall, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a 3-3 three, 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 three human soldier that costs 3 and a white. At the beginning of each combat, creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. If a creature you control has first strike, the same is true for flying, death touch, double strike, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, skulk, trample, and vigilance. I especially like the skulk. I was very relevant. Say skulk, yep. <laughs> very relevant. Uh, but yeah, basically, Odar, uh, Odar, <laughs> Audric. Uh, essentially gives uh, all of your creatures each other's uh, abilities and you just destroy people with your buffed up army. Yeah, just no contest. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. awesome. Amazing. I'm yeah. assuming there was a double striker or two in there that just made things Yeah, cool. yeah, it Go was man. insane, yeah. yeah. I think Loxodon Warhammer was involved too. No, uh, no. I don't know, they, who knows what happened, but <laughs> sure. it was bloody, yeah. Yep. Um, so after that game, we were like, wow, that was super fun. It, it kind of felt like when you first get into Commander yep. and there's just this wide open world of possibility sure like anything is possible it's this feeling of exploration that Mm -hmm. was kind of like reawakened by being like 
uh, restrained by a budget. It was mm. really fun. Yeah, well, restriction breeds creativity. Yeah, uh, I, I like to say, and I'm I'm sure I'm sure you don't put any words in your mouth. Uh, but uh, but yeah, basically, kind of when you're building on that budget, you know, you're looking at cards that aren't necessarily the most popular ones out there or mm-hmm. whatnot, or the yeah. ones you always cr- constantly are seeing, and so you you know you're using those kind of off the wall budget cards that no one else knows about in your you know you pull it up you play a um an old one I used to do in my in my drawer deck that people had never seen before is like mana severance we're like mm. what does that do <laughs> yeah. what is what, what's the purpose yeah. of that it used to be a budget card it's no longer anymore yeah, yeah. uh but yeah like you're pulling out these old cards then you're playing them and people are like oh my gosh what is that we well, have mm-hmm. to really dig to try to find yeah. kind of those effects and whatnot yeah. when you're when you're on a budget yep yeah. Oh, super fun. Speaking of mana severance, that's the one that you ditches all your lands out of your yeah, deck. Yeah, yeah, right? as many lands as you want. Okay, so, so yeah. yeah. So essentially, yeah, in that yeah. deck, yeah, you just get rid of all your lands, and then you just you're just drawn into yeah. more and more uh, gas. So. Yeah, I, I put that with Goblin Charbelcher in, oh, in my nice. uh, one of my jank decks just for fun. It's just yeah. like an alternate like kill one person it's con. Yeah. Really unfortunate yeah. that mana severance is now like ten bucks. Yeah, so. it's sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah unfortunate. But, yeah, reprint mana severance wizards. Thank you. Isn't it reserved? I think it's on randomly reserved uh, to a functional reprint of mana severance there we go i could be wrong too who knows i have no idea uh, yeah um so yeah we had we had a lot of fun with it um and uh shortly after that joe was like hey we we play like once a week why don't we just film ourselves playing mm-hmm. like you know people like to watch other people playing um so why don't we do that and it was it was kind of like tim and i were like you know we've done a lot of video stuff together in the yep. past and we were just kind of like oh yeah, why not? We can do some practice filmmaking mm-hmm. and uh, and playing at the same time. Sounds like a, a good combo. Yeah. Super easy to do gameplay, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Easiest yeah. thing so in the world. So easy. Yeah, so easy. Um, yeah, just ask the game by <laughs> people. Yeah. It takes them no time at all. Yikes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, so it was after that, it was basically um, maybe a week after we had that conversation, um, I kind of just kind of went off and I, I was thinking about it and I was like, how could we do it? That's maybe different than what's out there mm-hmm. right now. And, um, I, I love storytelling and it's something I want to do more of. I want to, um, I want to do more filmmaking. And so it was like, how can I combine these two? Mm-hmm. And I just kind of like the magic is so rich with imagination and like possibility that yep. it just, there was all these things that I could riff off of. And yes. it just kind of came up with this, concept that was about jank it was like vorthos stuff it was just like yeah it just all came together in like a week i made a pitch bible brought it to our group meeting and and it was just like hey should we do this and everybody's like yeah let's do this that's so, fantastic yeah it was, that's where it began yeah so yeah. You, i i never realized this but like you're kind of like um the in-depthness of like kind of like the quest for the jank lord world mm. is just deeper than i thought it was than i thought it was sure. i uh I, when i was uh when we were uh, spoiler alert if you haven't seen episode uh, the episode with me in it yet i can't remember which uh which jank lord it was I think uh, like five maybe six six anyway, six you'll yeah. find it yeah. uh it's one with all the pigs on the on the uh the, pig. On the icon yep there you go um or the thumbnail um when I was there sitting and I was looking at the wheel, I was like, I've seen this wheel before somewhere <laughs> on a card. And it took me yeah. forever to figure out, you know, it was Wheel, wheel of Fortune or Wheel, yeah. of, wheel of Fortune, the original one, right? Yeah, yeah Wheel of Fortune. It's yeah. on Wheel of Fate as well, but I mean, right. same, yeah, wheel. same wheel. But yeah, right. and then, yeah, you're the... Uh, um, the wheel master, the wheel master. is in there as He's well. He's there. He's yeah, there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. One one actual. You got a famous person on your set. You know, walking around. You know, the wheel master the wheel from master the actual himself one himself or itself. I don't know it's, what it yeah, is. Yeah, 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 there you go. So. Yeah, no, it's it's that that world is just is crazy. I, yeah. I love it. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So next question. You kind of mentioned this that you um, have experience with kind of video and in filming and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, how long have you actually been creating content in general, not magic specifically? Sure. Sure. Um, well, if we're going way back in like elementary school, I would write uh, really bad comic books mm-hmm. and like write plays and stuff like that. Like. I think my first stuff was probably like a Star Wars comic. Nice. Did you ever play uh, Dark Forces, the computer game? I don't. It's think okay so. if not. If anyone I don't did, think so. it was basically like taking the the Dark Trooper of that game, and they had like versions one, two, and three. And my comic was about version four. Oh. So it was you know kind of taking well, an well, idea fan fiction. as a yeah, yeah it was yeah. fan fiction. Yeah, it was great. Which Quest for the Jank Lord is fan fiction now that I think about it. <laughs> really, true, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyways. Um, so I've been kind of tinkering with that type of thing for a long time, but uh, Tim and I have been doing film stuff since we were uh, teenagers. Uh, I've been writing and directing plays pretty much constantly since college mm-hmm. as well. So it's just kind of a thing that I I do, I guess, and yeah. have done for a long time. I have a passion for. Yeah. 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 
And I would say the prior to Jank Lord, my most successful thing was uh, in high school. I made uh, a western for this contest for Avenge Sevenfold. Ooh, if anybody, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. Um, and it was like a producer for a day contest. And I made this little western spoof thing, and it won the contest. It's and fantastic. I got to, yeah, I got to go out to LA and hang out with them in the studio. It was during their uh, self-titled album, and I'm actually I, I make a sound effect on that album. I break a, a bottle of beer. That's yeah, awesome. In one of the songs. Yeah. That's fantastic. Anyway, so that that was fun. Uh, but then after that, uh, in 2016, uh, Tim and John and Sean were all involved in this too. Um, I made a Star Wars uh, fan film for the 2016 Fan Film Awards, and that was a top 25 worldwide finalist which is super fun that's fantastic yeah so that's probably been the most thing I, the thing i'm most proud of so far congratulations yeah oh, wait, hey, thanks I, I can't remember if you told me or if i saw do you still have any kind of like piece of the set left or whatnot or oh yes uh i have the spaceship still it's pretty awesome i'm just like waiting for the opportunity to use to it use again it set, oh, yeah. Yeah. Que- oh yeah quest of the drink lord goes to space goes yeah. to space yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that'd be fantastic yeah. i'd love yeah. to see that <laughs> that's awesome yeah. though um so what made you, and you kind of mentioned this before, This, I'm sure you've answered parts of this question kind of, but yeah. like specifically, what made you say, you know what, I'm going to take my content creation skills, you know, that I, mm. I know, and I'm going to, it's going to work. I'm going to apply it to magic. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to be able to do, this is a thing I, I can do, I'm going to do was, uh, what, what kind of, what made you kind of take the jump, take the mm, leap? Yeah, yeah. Uh it, like like I said before, magic is just so rich with possibility. There are so many ways to play it and to interact with it mm. um, that it's just it's really inspiring. So mar- marrying it with my desire to be a storyteller just seemed like just so obvious, I guess. Mm. And it, it just seemed like the opportune time. Uh, magic and Commander specifically is just growing so much that it was just like, all right, now's the time to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Yeah, I mean, and you've got other channels out there. I don't know if anyone who's watching has ever seen or heard of this small thing called uh, Game Nights um but uh but yeah they kind of see inspiration from that too i'm sure i mean i oh my gosh my channel started you know after kind of like learning you know what commander was and you know um kind of certain like you know how to build a proper deck and that kind of stuff like to what when originally starting off i remember one of my first decks was sram and i had seen that in the game nights episode i'm like oh i love sram this thing's fantastic Mm, mono white's gonna be great (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but uh yeah just kind of seeing other people do it kind of inspires a little bit and kind of you know says like okay if they can do it i can do it It might not be up to the same standard right away but you know you 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 know i mean you've had you know a little bit of a you know um uh, not a leg up but you know you had some prior knowledge Mm -hmm. that helped you out as well but you don't necessarily need that right no you really don't you really don't you can kind of there's so many it's it's endless the possibility of what you could mm-hmm. create yeah like even you like uh like when you told me that you've made all these videos on iMovie like you're used <laughs> using iMovie and don't judge me people yeah, <laughs> you know, but not that that's bad but it was just like anything is possible really. yeah 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 so when I originally started uh I knew nothing uh, I still don't know very much uh, but yeah, I was just basically using whatever came free on my, my Mac. So I was using GarageBand. I was using iMovie. I was just kind of just hodgepodging it all together to make it work. And it somehow did uh, for a while. I've since switched over to a slightly more reputable program with Final Cut Pro uh, okay. X. But yeah, ooh, yeah, fancy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, you can you can make it work with, um, you know, with a very you know low investment to start. You know, you can make it work with limited knowledge there's tutorials online you know for you know how to do this how to do that mm-hmm. that kind of stuff there's a lot of recommendation videos too and we'll get mm-hmm. into some kind of like how you can start things later yeah. but um yeah it doesn't take it doesn't take much to start and you know it just takes kind of an idea and kind of the will to to put it into yes. reality right yes yep um okay so we talked a lot about how much time it kind of takes to make you know all this content and kind of what all goes into it how exactly are you got you got a team yourself? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. How exactly are those responsibilities kind of delegated within the quest for the Jank Lord team? Yeah, well, as we grow, we're kind of still figuring that out. You know, as we go, uh, thanks to you, we grew like exponentially in like two days. <laughs> we had been putting videos out for a year, and well, then not thanks to me. Which, thank you, viewers who went and watched them. And if you yes, haven't watched them, yes, yet, thank go you. watch them and subscribe. Yeah. They are fantastic. Yeah. Oh well, thanks. Um, thanks for coming on, by the way, oh. and kicking our butts. Of but, course, of um, course. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, right now, I write, edit, direct, and produce all the videos. Um, Tim and I handle the technical stuff on mm-hmm. shoots. Uh, he's the director of photography, and then I'll um, pitch in shooting stuff when he's not available. Mm-hmm. 
uh, Tim and Sean run the Patreon now, which is great. Because uh, as as I'm sure you know, like that's yep. I mean that's huge. Yeah, there's uh, it. Pat- I mean, patrons uh, do so much for the channel. Yeah. They, I mean, they might not even realize kind of how much they do. Like this yeah. studio itself would not be here. I would not be filming on this camera, using this mic. You, you, would, yeah. not, you would not have that mic. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, you yeah. probably wouldn't have, we'd be sharing a mic, <laughs> yeah. and it would not be this <laughs> so, one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, patrons were not involved. Um, yeah, it really does. It's it's the lifeblood of a channel. It really um, is, yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah so, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you all. So Tim and, uh, Tim and Sean kind of run that right now. Uh, John and Joe are heading up the business and marketing side of, of things, and John and Tim both work on like animations and logos and stuff like that Mm -hmm. our main logo our newer one is actually uh made by another friend emery allen he's a graphic designer in minneapolis he's awesome he's i'll I'll tag his twitter name here if he has yeah yeah he does yeah he's great um let's see so yeah as as you know there's just like so many ancillary things that Mm -hmm. need to happen uh like even fetching cards for the um for the videos that pop up like Thank God for Scryfall, Scry- by the way. You, thank you, Scryfall. We love you, you so are much. Yeah, a godsend for yeah, many reasons. You, yeah, you really are. Yeah. So yeah, there, there's so much keeping the jank, you know, spreadsheet of commanders updated. <laughs> jank know? spreadsheet of commanders. Yeah, yeah. I there's a it. spreadsheet, and there's like a function you push, and it pulls it's up like your, a random, your commander. Random yeah. roll kind of. But it's yeah, so fun. If it, once one's once one's chosen, do you take it out of the list then, so it can't be chosen again? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. There's retired ones until you get so. through all of them, which isn't going to happen because new commanders come out every day. Yeah, and every day. What is it with Commander Legacy? See you next year it's just kind of like legend Legends, yeah, legends, yeah. legends yeah. right legends Mayor legacy right. is gonna be the 2021 obviously you, that's yes you got exactly. the early preview <laughs> <so. laughs> yes i'm in the know <laughs> definitely yeah so yeah there's so much and honestly mitch how do you do it all by yourself uh to be honest i could not have done this without my wife um like she has been so supportive yeah. of you know the long nights of uh, kind of I, I wouldn't have been able to kind of make the jump to go full time without kind of her uh, kind of support and her encouragement yeah. um, to say, yes, you know, you, we can make, you know, make the jump early. We'll make things work. And, you know, you can put extra time in so you can get all those episodes out and stuff like yeah. that. I, I've gotten better kind of at a workflow now where like I've got, you know, days that I shoot, I got days that I edit, I mm-hmm. got days that I do all my my slides and stuff like that. But like it's um, it all comes back to kind of this willingness to make it done and then having support from patrons having support from the community having support from uh, those that are close to you too it just mm-hmm. it all it all helps um yeah. and obviously having have a team with you to support kind of into to to spread out those responsibilities uh that you can and that um that encourage and you know and that really are all you know kind of on the same page yeah. and you know let's do this it really helps as well mm-hmm. yeah no that's awesome Supportive spouses are are the best thing. <laughs> yes, they're they're the, they're the best thing. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes. Um, okay. Um, moving on now. Uh, next question. Let's go with what is the most challenging thing in your opinion uh-huh. when it comes to content creation? Yes. Okay. So I think the most challenging thing is possibly the most uh, rewarding thing or the most fun thing, and that's mm-hmm. just the journey of bringing an idea into a reality. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many. Uh, dreams and unwritten novels in, in people's heads yep. that just are waiting for someday to happen that just mm-hmm. never happen. Um, and they need to happen because Netflix keeps just, you know, redoing like all old movies into TV shows now. And we, yeah. we want new content. We really do. We want fresh stuff. So mm-hmm. please write that <laughs> novel. Um, but, uh, and, and like self doubt, money, and time are just always going to get in the way. Mm hmm. And overcoming those things, uh, it's obviously hugely important, but so rewarding when you do um, with like a healthy amount of effort, like and the support of others, as yep. you've been talking about, like you can make the journey from out of your head onto the page or yep. onto the screen or whatever. It's just it's so possible. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it's well, there's, there's a lot of self doubt when you get started, right? Yeah, Where yeah, like you don't, yeah. you, know, you think like, okay, no one's gonna watch this, no one's mm-hmm. gonna, no one's gonna like it, no one's gonna comment, people are just gonna, I'm gonna get laughed at, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's kind of what you, yeah. you got that kind of inner kind of negative voice in your mind, and it's just tough to get kind of pushed past that and just just do it and just get out it. there and you know make adjustments. Like my yeah. first, my first episode, I re-recorded I think four times. Yeah, uh, I did a lot. Again, I was editing in like iMovie and, and you know GarageBand. I was, I was yeah. doing, I had no idea what I was doing, and. You know, a lot of people were very encouraging in the comments. A lot of people, you know, said, you know, like we, we would like some more, you know, of this kind of content. You know, here's maybe something you can edit. You could talk mm. a little bit slower. I still haven't learned how to do that. <laughs> probably won't happen because that's just how I talk. Uh, I apologize to all of you that keep commenting. Please talk slower. Uh, I'm so sorry. Not going to uh, happen. Yeah. But, uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to yeah. learn. Uh, but um, 
yeah, there's a, that self doubt kind of that voice, you know, that says like, you know, like, oh, that's a stupid idea. Don't do mm -hmm. it. But like, yeah, you just got to kind of push past that. Right. Where mm -hmm. you that getting started is the hardest thing, I, mm -hmm. in my opinion, you like just yeah. kind of like, yeah, getting past it, getting your idea out there. And then, yeah, yeah, then you can make the adjustments. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the first episode of Game Nights, they're a long shot from back then as to where they are now. Yeah. You know, they were filming, I think, in Jimmy's apartment or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, you know, not, not sound issues or whatnot, but like, you know, it sounds, it looks a, a, a lot better these days than it did back then. You're not going to, you can't exactly expect, you know, to get to the, you know, the, the, uh, the big leagues right away, like right. on your first episode, you know, you, mm -hmm. you got to, you know, good is, or what is it? Uh, great is the enemy of good or something like that. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what that quote yeah, exactly yeah. is, but like, you know, Make sure you get something out there, you know, and then learn from it and adjust. Yeah. Don't don't be afraid of, of failure because you, you might fail. You'll probably fail. Yeah. But you can't iterate on something if you don't have something to iterate exactly. on. Exactly. Like, so just just do it. So, yeah, I mean, I tried to start a lot of different companies before, you know, before Commander's Quarters and every single one of them failed. Like, you know, uh -huh. you, you, you learn, you work, you adjust, you, you get out there and you keep trying and, you know, you're going to kick down sometimes and that's okay. Your next try might be the one that actually works. So yeah, that's awesome. And now I want to know what these companies were. I am not telling you. Okay. About yeah. <laughs> I, I think I've deleted all the old, you know, Facebook groups that are like support my new company that's coming uh, up. And nice. I nice. hope so, but we'll yeah. see. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, I, uh, I no, those will stay. Those will stay buried for yeah, a long okay. time. All right. Well, you showed the haters. You have now. You have a pig hat. You, like you, you're just it's, it's <laughs> now. The, I have yeah. a. You know, you you've have, made you it when you have hat. a pig hat. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> and then a room full of pigs. Yeah, yeah. The shrine. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Um, so now we've gone on and talked about kind of the most challenging things about content creation. Let's talk about some more specifics. Like how long exactly does it take you to make a jank Lord gameplay episode? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, well, um, kind of bridging this, the, the editing is by far for, to me, the, the hardest part. Like I, I'm, I, like I've edited for a long time, mm -hmm. but it's like, I'm not, super like i'm not a professional editor sure um so it's just like that's the where the slog hits for me mm -hmm. um but anyways e episode one took basically nine months from start to finish mm -hmm. at least and that's not counting when we built the set sure um that's just from when we started shooting it to when we finished it and you guys actually built like that set by hand right we did yeah yeah um one of my uh good friends uh nate farley he's uh like a he does a lot of theater stuff mm -hmm. with me. He's like a he's a great prop designer, uh, set builder. He's he's incredible. He's a super creative person, and so we brought him in for that. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, so he's he's amazing. Um, yeah, so we built that episode one. We filmed uh, nine months later. I think uh, is when it was birthed into the world. Um, writing an episode usually takes like five to ten hours. It usually mm -hmm. is stewing for longer than that, you know, and there are other factors at play there. Um, yeah. But usually, like, the actual t typing. Typing out, but, yeah. You know, five to ten hours, mm -hmm. give or take. It's not all off the cuff. These are actual lines scripted. Right, yeah. There, there's, like, a there's like a healthy interplay of, like, there's there's a script, um, but then, you know, I, I like it when a set, ha there's the ability to have some improv in yeah, there, too. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm sure you write out all the Wheelmaster's lines, right? Just an actual oh, my gosh, yeah. language language yeah, speaking, yeah. but, yeah, you just type mm -hmm. it all out. It's just you yeah. probably just smash the keyboard a couple times. And yeah, yeah. That's it. It's the black tongue. Ah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's the writing, uh, planning, and scheduling all the moving parts. That's not. That's kind of hard to quantify mm -hmm. how long that takes. Um, we usually have three to five separate days of of filming. Kind of gotcha. depends. Um, we try to keep the game into one day. There have been a couple of times when. <laughs> we had to we had to continue a game like a, a on a different day. Yeah. I, I think it was a brawl game, a sealed brawl game. Brawl games, uh, as you know, take forever. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd you'd think they wouldn't, but um, yeah, uh, like for example, um, I'm editing episode seven right now. Mm -hmm. Um, when we record this, and we filmed the first, uh, we filmed the game like um uh, over a month ago, or mm -hmm. or just just under a month ago, and I got the last shot of the episode like yesterday so gotcha. it's just kind of you know it's all over the place as to yeah. when you know when stuff happens so well. i mean things things happen you know you've got you know um potentially certain issues that popped up yep. potentially mm -hmm. that you have to fix you know i think you, the way you guys call it i love it i think gremlins got into the system or, or oh yeah or, so many gremlins i think i've yeah. said it before like on an episode it was like yeah, yeah gremlins <laughs> like, oh um, my gosh I, I do believe it though with you know yeah. you guys are in the nether realm right. so yeah it was gremlins right yeah around. Yeah, it so makes perfect. sense. Yeah. But yeah, things things happen. Things you know, life happens sometimes as well, mm -hmm. where you know things get in the way, and you have to adjust your schedule or whatnot. Yeah. And it's, I mean, as the game nights guys will will tell you that basically, you know, the 
takes them, you know, a month, you know, they, I think they come out of their, their gameplay series every month, once a month, I believe. And people always ask, why can't you do more of these? Mm -hmm. it's, it takes a long time, especially, you know, for their setup. I mean, to, you know, put out that kind of content, um, and they're doing, they're doing that full time. Like they've got a team doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, and so when you don't necessarily have that, you know, it's, it's going to take time to put everything out. Right. Yeah. And it, for, for us and we're like, you know, this is like, peanuts compared to i'm sure what game nights are doing technically mm. like it takes it takes me like 50 to 60 plus hours in post-production to do to edit an episode mm -hmm. so it's just like it's just an immense amount of time yeah 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 i think i think the gameplay or the gameplay the game nights guys say like theirs takes i think hundreds of hours uh but oh, i mean they've got an entire team going on it but yeah you know, they do amazing work um but yeah just when you're when you're one person kind of editing mm -hmm. um kind of uh and you're doing all the editing mm -hmm. for post production yeah. then yeah then you know trying to find 50 to 60 hours of of work you know be, between everything else in life you know, right. it's gonna take some yep. time yeah so yeah um okay how about uh we're gonna move on to the next question um where do you think people should start uh, when they're trying to jump into magic content creation do you have any kind of recommendations for people yeah well first obviously ask yourself what you want to do mm -hmm. and then ask how you can do it i think it's important to balance the ambition of a vision with the resources that you have available yeah. to you um wise words yeah yes <laughs> uh resources could be like a number of things like we've kind of been touching on it could be um it could be people that you know mm -hmm. uh your skill set the equipment that you have available yep. location a lot of stuff yeah when we started we were renting a hodgepodge of different cameras for mo a lot mm -hmm. of the episodes because i could get them for free where i was where i was working mm -hmm. so that that was what we had to do at the time and making the most of your resources yeah exactly yeah um i think i edited the first three episodes on a macbook air <laughs> which is like the most, the most powerful horrifying. computer yeah, of all time yeah. macbook air oh <laughs> man it, it was crashing so often it got to a point where i couldn't export videos anyway like oh, it, was, no. it was terrible um but we, we nothing made it against happen. macbook airs yes no uh, they were not sponsor yes. hashtag not a sponsor not, uh, yes. apple's not a sponsor yes. uh but yeah. macbook airs not maybe not might not be the best for editing right gameplay yes. episodes that have a ton of <laughs> yeah of footage yeah exactly um what else we got here um yeah and, and in terms of location like i feel pretty uh pretty lucky like we have this awesome set that my dad has allowed us to keep in one of like take up an entire room of his house for mm -hmm. the last two years. So there's just, it, it goes back to the support thing too. Yep. Like there, there is a lot you can do on your own. Um, but there's a lot that you, that you can, you'll have to rely on other people, yeah, which is fine, which is, which is great. Yeah. Which is okay. You know, if you've yep. got some friends that might have, you know, some, some skills that you might not have that can help out, you know, if you've mm -hmm. got a friend who does some design work, you know, you might be able to have them help you make, you know, your logo. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, if you know anyone who did sound at any point, you know, mm -hmm. you can have them help you with, you know, editing or whatnot, or just learn kind of the ropes from other people, you know, yeah. reach out. There's a huge community out there. You know, people, there's a lot of people out there who are just willing to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the magic content creation community. Mm -hmm. uh from my little bit of experience is just is just awesome even, yeah. even mitch like uh, we we just got to talking we realized we lived in the same place and he was totally cool with coming on an episode um not that you know that's the help you're going to get all the time but yeah if they, you ask i might not be able to make it on your episode yes, i'm yes, sorry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't hold me to that yeah, no <laughs> but in terms of technical stuff too it's like you know there's there's some stuff on discord even there's some there, there's just there's just places that you can find people who are ahead of you uh, that mm -hmm. can help you that yeah. want to help you that well, are, it, yeah you, and that kind of helps you know kind of you're, you're gonna make mistakes it's mm -hmm. gonna happen yep. like and that's okay but it's gonna help alleviate kind of the mistakes that you do make you mm -hmm. know i i've made a ton of mistakes with this channel so far with a lot of things that you know i've had to kind of relearn or learn differently or I bought the wrong piece of equipment I gotta go return I gotta mm -hmm. get a different piece of equipment like I'm, I'm still asking you kind of on you guys are doing the gameplay and mm -hmm. so I'm trying to learn you know what kind of uh, what kind of mics do I need what kind of you know audio equipment do yeah. I need to make it actually work because I've I've talked into you know a mic like this before but you can't exactly mm -hmm. just put you know four of these I guess you could you, you could, could four of these around the table it might be a yeah. little distracting and the overhead yeah. cam might not work as well yeah. but yeah you I can't just put four of these in front of me and so uh -huh. it's it's a lot to learn like you yeah. know you gotta you have to rely on other people and you know, there's a lot of people in the community that you said they you know are very willing to help yeah no it's it's awesome uh yeah I, I feel like we've said this before it just, yeah just get started mm -hmm. get yeah, started just get started yeah i mean it's um and i'll i'll try to kind of include like you know my base setups mm -hmm. or, my, or what i start off with the equipment that i start cool. off with kind of the programs i'll include that in the description somewhere 
please, Mitch, remember, future Mitch, remember when you're editing, <laughs> you put that in. Um, but basically, you know, it's, you can get started. I think I, I bought my mic and my stand uh, and, uh, you know, the pop filter or whatnot for, I think it was $75 total or something like that. Mm. Um, you know, I already had, I was just using my uh, personal computer. You know, if you don't have one, you might need to get one. You're, you will need to get one if you yeah. want to do editing. Yep. Um, but yeah, like it, it, if it's if you use your resources they already have, you know Apple, you know if you if you got if you got a Mac, you can just use iMovie, you can use GarageBand, you know kind of my same mm -hmm. similar setup to start off with, and you can have a very minimal kind of investment to start off with, and yeah. you know kind of grow from there. You make adjustments. You once you know you start get going, you can you know improve your quality and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. people aren't expecting your very first episode to be the best of all time, right? You know, yeah. People adjust their expectations with, you know, how kind of senior you are in the in the content creation space. Mm -hmm, right. You know, yeah. The further along you get, you might have to eventually adjust, you know, your mm -hmm. and improve your quality. But like when you start off, you know, they're not expecting, you know, Pixar level quality. So right, yeah. I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. 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 So Yeah. And and kind of what you what going back to the failure thing, like you mentioned, you re recorded your first thing like four times. I did. Yeah. We we shot an, a different episode one. That there was so much technical uh, issue with it that we had to scrap it. And you lost that game, right? You didn't want that to happen. Well, <laughs> that is true. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I could tell you who won, but we might release what's there at some point. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we just had to restart. And so figuring out the balance of like what your expectations are for yourself or what you know what mm -hmm. that standard is you want to hold yourself to. But also giving yourself some grace too. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Be, go easy on yourself. That's probably another good piece of advice. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not going to get it overnight. You're not going to. You're not just going to suddenly become, you know, the the best content creator of all time. You know, <laughs> yeah. from from the get go. You right. know? So give yourself a break. Um. You know, get your stuff out there. Get ask for feedback. Ask for constructive mm -hmm. criticism. Mm -hmm. Not people just yelling in the comments. You know. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, ask for constructive criticism, and you know, take it and you know, make adjustments. Yeah. That's one thing I I respect you a lot for, Mitch, is that you are constantly like, "Hey, I'd love feedback," mm -hmm. and that's that's a, that is a hard thing to ask for. It, it is yeah. because you're kind of opening yourself up, you know. But I, I kind of learned from previous jobs and whatnot that mm -hmm. you know, to really improve and to kind of get better, you need to be ask people honestly what they think. Mm -hmm. You you know, and you know, again, constructive criticism, you know, just be like this sucks. That right, doesn't yeah. really help. <laughs> you know, what about yeah, it? Yeah. What about it isn't so good? What could right. be improved? What you know, could Mitch talk slower? He probably could, but he's trying. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> ask for constructive criticism. People are happy to give it, you know? Mm -hmm. So ask your friends, ask your family, ask, ask you know, the community in general, you know, what do you think I could improve on yeah. this? Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question. What kinds of software or tools would be good for beginners when they're jumping into content mm. creation? We kind of mentioned a couple things. We did, yeah. We, we can get out, you know, the, the um, if you're willing to, or if you already have access to a couple other programs or whatnot, or if a friend does, you know, what, what I guess is out there that people can get started with, uh, you know, today if they want to, learning, watching videos on. Yeah, um, yeah. What's out there for content creation? Sure, yeah. Well, there's, like you mentioned iMovie. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that a lot of people maybe are going to have right off the bat uh there's adobe i'm a fan of uh premiere adobe premiere and mm -hmm. like the whole adobe suite if yep. you're a student you could get like a nice monthly package rate and get yeah, the whole thing which discount is nice. for students which is great yeah. yeah which is cool um but really like you could do you could do something with a cell phone like cell phones yep. do so much now and the video is pretty nice like yep. And there's video editing on it. There's iMovie on cell phones. Like I did not know that actually. Yeah, so it, you could do everything on a phone if you wanted. Not everything has to look like game nights, you know. Yeah, not, I mean, it's, nothing it's, else does anyways. Exactly, so, it's yeah. not going to to start. So yeah, just yeah. you know, learn, make adjustments, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and improve. Um, yeah, and another one. I mean, I, I I went from iMovie and now I'm at Final Cut Pro. I think is another one that I would recommend. Like if you are a little more experienced. Or if, if you want to kind of jump into like, um, I wish I would have made the transition earlier, but I was still glad that I started off with iMovie to yeah. start. But that's another one that you can use as well. And if you're just doing, like, as you said, with a cell phone, like you don't you don't necessarily have to jump into YouTube content creation. If you're doing a podcast, which there are plenty of amazing podcasts out there, mm -hmm. including yeah. Magic Podcasts too, you don't need to do the video editing stuff. Then. Right. You know, yeah. you're, you're doing the audio and you mm -hmm. can focus on that. And there's plenty of different tools that you can use for that. You know, again, I mentioned GarageBand is what you know, I have used. You know, you've got you know, Adobe products like Adobe Audition. I yep. Think. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, there's yeah. there's a lot of different uh, kind of avenues kind of to get into content creation. And maybe you mm -hmm. start off with a podcast, and then you go into YouTube or you do the other way around. So, yeah, it's there's there's a lot to learn and there's just a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of different software and tools out there to help you. Yeah, it's great. YouTube is your friend. 
<laughs> YouTube is definitely your yes. friend. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention too is um, kind of like resources as well. We mentioned Scryfall before. Yes. Like, so Scryfall is great because they have all the images. They also have the like the backgrounds that you'll see in my episodes too. Scryfall has actually like you know the art cropped out for the for the mm -hmm. like you know the background piece yeah. that you're using too. So yep. thank you to them. Ooh. But again, just utilize your resources. You don't have to go you know type in you know. Um, Force of Will on Google. Find an image of that. Oh, man. Try to you know, Can get you that image. If you yeah. do individual ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be that'd be terrible. Yeah. Uh, uh. But yeah, it's um, use the resources that you have. Um, you know, actually, I started off um, making my uh, my episodes more like slides, where I was doing kind of like a basically a PowerPoint presentation, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. essentially, where I was just using uh, sketches the program that that mm -hmm. I uh, I've used. Uh, essentially, it's um, it's it's for four designers. I used to be a UX UI designer. Um, and essentially, you know, you're making like fancy slides uh, with that, but like you're utilizing a resource and other people are like, wait, you use Sketch for your episodes? I'm like, yeah, isn't that what everyone does? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but you, you don't have to, you know, go out and buy, you know, thousands of dollars worth of equipment or software. Yeah. Utilize what you have. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And, and we, and we mentioned the community too, as that's like a, that's kind of a tool in and of mm -hmm. itself, the magic community, just, yep. just reach out. Um, and I think most importantly is have fun. Like do yes. do something you want to do. Like don't don't set expectations. Like like I'm gonna be this big at this time. Yes. Just have fun. Do something that you want to do. Magic has so much room for more diverse and varied voices. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's hear yours. That'd be great. Absolutely. Yeah. Get out there. I want to yeah. watch your content. All of it. All of it. <laughs> One hundred thousand now. new channels, please. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's an open world and there are plenty of opportunities yeah. kind of to jump in. And yeah, like you said, you know, do something you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. People can, people can tell when you, when you, you know, are, are being, um, kind of your true self when you're being, mm -hmm. um, natural, when you, when you're actually kind of living what you say, like, you know, I actually, people ask me this all the time. Do you actually play budget decks? Yes, I do. I don't own any expensive decks. Yeah. If my if my you know collection somehow got stolen, I'd be out you know a couple hundred dollars versus thousands. You know, yeah. I've got a, you know whatever it is. I think six seven decks at this point. So whatever six times twenty five or fifty is depending yeah. on when I built the deck. But you know, like I only play budget decks. Like that's yeah. that's just what I do. Like you yeah. know that that's my thing. You know, if someone else were to try to come in potentially and you know like oh I'm gonna do a budget channel and like I just play a thousand dollar decks yeah people can usually tell kind of you know like okay this person might not know exactly what they're talking about with certain things not that people can't do that mm -hmm. you you can definitely try you can definitely do it but like if you're you know a a passionate commander player make a commander channel don't mm -hmm. you know not necessarily you know oh look pioneer I don't play pioneer but you know maybe since pioneer is brand new people will watch it mm -hmm. like I'm gonna go try to yeah, jump yeah. into that space yeah do what you're passionate about do what you enjoy doing and you know you're not really you know the, the work flies by you know your time flies you know when you're working on something you love yeah yeah don't don't feel the need to follow like the zeitgeist just follow your own geist follow your heart follow yeah, your own the, geist yeah um, follow the geist of St. Trap. <laughs> yeah, th there we go. That, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and it, like, that's cool, Mitch. Like, I remember like uh, when when we played like not with on the show, but you just you had budget decks, which I yeah. thought was so cool. And I'm trying to like I, I don't have an expansive collection. But the other day I like I was like, I'm, I I sold my Teferi's protection because I was just like, it's like, no, like I'm, I'm going to practice what I preach. Um, not that you have to do that. No, but it's just all. like, it, I don't, yeah, I just think that's pretty cool. But um. Uh, yeah, and I also remember asking you, do you build all? Do you actually build physically build all the decks that you talk about? <laughs> <laughs> physically, like, no, no, I don't have all those cards. <laughs> I could not do that. Yeah, I do not yeah. have access to every yeah, single card no. in, or every single budget yeah. card in Magic. I do yeah. not have access to that. No, I build them online and I yeah. play test them online. I do not physically build every single one. Unfortunately, yeah. wish I could. <laughs> I, I do not have the vast, time nor resources. Yeah, I, have, I would need decks, a lot yeah. bigger uh, storage yeah. uh, in these in these bins right, here to, yeah. to, to keep all those cards. Yeah, but yeah, no, and I'm not I'm not an organized person when it comes to that kind of stuff too. So it would take me forever. Oh uh, yeah. So, Oof. okay. Uh, last question uh, that's on our list. I'm sure we've got more questions that we're gonna talk about. But um, where in the world did you guys get that incredible theme song? Ah uh, yes, the crown jewel. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So my good friend Dan Stewart is a musician here in Minneapolis. Mm. Uh, he's like super proficient with the bass, but he's like basically a renaissance man musically. Mm. And he plays for a lot of bands in the area. Um, he's in this awesome band I love called Wingman. Um, they're great. You can check them out. If you're um, in the Minneapolis area, yes, check them out. Yes. Uh, Pool Boy is another one that he's been playing in recently. He, he, he's all over the place. 
Uh, Does he play the Quest for Jenkler song at those? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Right. No, that's for the live show. Which, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I I knew that the show needed like kind of a campy intro that was kind of mm -hmm. like '90s TV show vibes, yep. and I just knew that Dan was gonna be the guy for the job. So I I wrote up the lyrics and we met and just talked about the vibe of it, and mm -hmm. he just like came back to me with this song, and it was just and nailed like, it. <laughs> yeah, it just nailed it, and it was just like this is exactly what I needed, and it's like the thing that when I when I heard it, I was like. All right, our thing is legit now. It gets yeah, it gets yeah. stuck in my head like on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, do you, I'm 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 not going to hold you to this, but do you mind if I played like a little bit of a clip here? Do like, it, yeah. Okay, so right after here, yeah. you will hear a yeah. slight clip of their amazing song. I don't there know if I'll go. play the I might play the whole thing, but I'm yeah, not, just uh, if, just go thing, check yeah. it on their channel. But yeah, uh, yeah it's it's yeah. amazing. It, it's awesome. Yeah. The Minneapolis community is so is so cool. There's so many creative people here, like mm -hmm. musically and and magic wise, is just really great. But yeah, I, I can't recommend living here necessarily. We're inside like a <laughs> third like of the, the year. Cold? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, yeah. Minneapolis has a, a great magic community. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of great uh, magic shops in the area. I think you guys had in your intro, right? You've got Manus, the Mana Source. Is that what the, the Source? Yeah, the Source. The yeah. Source. Uh, yeah, you've got the Source. It's yep. an amazing shop. Actually, mm -hmm. that's kind of how I, I found that you guys were here. I was like, wait. I recognize that uh, logo. Nice. Yeah, that's I've awesome. seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> they are here. Uh, but yeah, I believe um, Good Luck uh, High Five is also mm -hmm. here too yep. in Minneapolis too. So yeah, you know the, the they call it the new you know hub of of, of, of magic. You know, it's definitely the not new hub. It's not it's not the West Coast. No, it's no. definitely Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> stranded in the middle here. Yeah. yeah so Upper especially middle. if you're in Minnesota, you definitely can start content creation. That's yeah. Just, I mean, oh, what yeah. else are you gonna do during the winter? You what else are you gonna do? Exactly. I mean, you yeah. can't go outside. You no. Know? So play yeah, games. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, very quickly, uh, before we move on though. So that was the last question we had on our list before we move on any sneak peeks on kind of what the future uh, holds for quest for the jank Lord. What are you guys working on it? You said that your episode seven mm -hmm. actually will already be out. So yes. please go check that out. What's, yeah. So what's in episode seven first, I guess, and then what's in the future? Well, uh, episode seven, we played with the pre-cons obviously, and some, some stuff happens in the episode. Uh, that kind of gets the story moving a little bit more. Um, so we actually, we're kind of coming towards the end of season one of Quest for the Jank Lord. We've got gotcha. a few episodes left. Setting up for the space adventure after yeah, that, right? Setting up for, yes, Quest for the Jank Lord 3000. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so there will be a season two, don't worry. Um, but we're kind of getting towards the end of that first uh, first season. That's awesome. Um, we're, we're always thinking of new, new games to try, so we've got some things in the works there. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. We're, our, we have some goals, no promises, but we our, our goal is to be a little more consistent um, with uh, getting our videos out uh, in 2020 um, with season two and beyond and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, and that's that's only like Mitch has talked about this, but it's only possible from our, because of our patrons. Mm -hmm. Like if any of our patrons are watching right now, I love you. <laughs> I love you. Um, we I love, love you, you too. We love you dearly. Thanks, yeah. Mitch. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're, we're, we're excited. Quest for the Jank Lord has just begun. Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah, so uh, do I get an early sneak peek to episode seven before it goes out to everyone else? Um, if you want. I'll send you the uh, I'll send you the rough cut. You're supposed to say right there it's only for patrons. Oh right. Oh shoot. <laughs> Dang it. Some patrons get a little earlier or whatnot. They do, they, they do. do. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. That's awesome. So if you want to see their episodes early, go support them on Patreon. Patreon. 
Okay. Perfect. All right. So let's move on to our next, uh, it's not really a topic. I guess this is kind of just yeah. starting to be a kind of uh, show staple for Ooh. our podcast episodes. Uh, card of the day. So I talk about cards all the time, but I want to hear what my guest has to bring up. So mm. Daniel's going to talk about a card that's on his mind for whatever reason it can be. He loves it. He hates it. Uh, he randomly hit, you know, the random generator in Scryfall or whatnot, and that's what popped oh, I up. I should have done that. Yeah, or he just really likes the art. It doesn't, it doesn't or it's, you know, like a picture. I, I, people are really into, you know, building those decks. So you're like, it's everyone in a chair. Or, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Bald people screaming or whatnot. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> that's really hilarious. Fun. I haven't seen exactly. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll do a deck tag on yeah. one of those someday. Oh, that's it's hilarious, It's going to be man. great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so what card is on your mind currently? And let's discuss it. Yes. So the card in my mind, I brought it here. Ooh, fancy. Is... Tomorrow, a zombie's familiar. Okay, I think I've seen. I played against. I believe this one before. You did, yeah. Okay. So this this is the the commander I played in the first episode of Quest for the Jank Lord. All right, so let me read it real quick yeah, for those of you who do, do not off. know, and for those of you who are listening on the mm-hmm. podcast versus yep. on YouTube. Let me pull it up. Actually, you have it right here. I'm just gonna read off this. Read it off. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Here we go. Um. All right. So tomorrow, a zombie's familiar is a one five spirit. Looks like a frog. Uh, it costs five and a blue. It says, if you would draw a card, look at the top three cards of your library. Instead, put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Okay. Yes. All right. So first, I'm going to start off real quick with the the artwork, right? So it's this uh, kind of creepy, whimsical frog spirit thing. It's got mm-hmm. some lanterns. Well, it's in Kamigawa, lanterns. right? Yeah, so it's, it's in kinda, Kamigawa, yeah. yeah. So it's got this great vibe to it. It's Christopher mm-hmm. Rush. It's it's awesome. Yep. Um, the, the eyes are like separate faces and for the longest I don't think I noticed that yeah actually. well what's funny is that for the longest time I actually didn't notice the the frog face like the big face on the thing mm-hmm. and I just noticed the the derpy eye faces and, oh um, and so it was like not until like relatively recently that I actually like saw the, like the that mouth it, there the frog. Yeah. Yeah. yeah anyways it's it's just I love when magic art like is is like uh kind of you discover it's it like, yeah, like over like time deep, like you're like kind of got, it's got layers yeah, yeah yeah and part of that is it's in a stinking little frame but um <laughs> but uh, you hear that wizards we want yeah, bigger we cards want bigger cards oversized yeah, cards all of them yeah double sleeving an oversized yeah, deck can you imagine going. opening a big booster pack <laughs> like yeah um, three feet by four yeah, feet or whatever it is yeah. yeah yeah so i the artwork is awesome mm-hmm. um and uh in terms of of why i like it play wise um it was it was kind of the first commander that was like that I built that was blue. Mm-hmm. Um, Yasova was had blue in there, but this was the first time where I learned like blue is pretty good. Yeah, blue blue is okay. In, yeah, in commander, <laughs> it's uh, yeah definitely one of the stronger one of the if not the strongest one of the strongest. Yeah, yeah, and and so I I guess I I just didn't I didn't know that before. I think I was too scared to delve into the to the waters, but <laughs> the waters. Blue. Yeah, 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 blue. Hello. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow kind of made me realize that blue is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's got, uh, kind of a, j- it's got a janky combo with, um, an eight mana artifact called possessed portal. Oh, yep. That would, cause you can't draw. Is yeah. That what possessed portal does, but this lets you draw. Yep. It basically all, all, um, players skip their draw step and then they also have to sack a permit at the end of each turn. But, okay. um, with tomorrow, it means that I can still draw cards because I'm not drawing cards. I'm putting them into my hand. Okay. So, so it kind of around. It skirts. It skirts the rule. Yeah. Yeah. Not. Okay. Yeah. So it's just really. It's like he's. Uh, it's like tomorrow's six mana. Possessed portals eight mana. It's just this really expensive like sure. lock on the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, people can still cast their commander and you know, but it, it's just fun. It it takes like. 14 mana to work up like the <laughs> portal like a wheel effect yeah. like windfall or something and then i like to have a counter spell too in case sure. anybody messes so with yeah, it, it takes, so. it takes quite a, yeah. blue is not exactly the best well, i guess it, it does have a lot of infinite yeah. kind of mana combos yeah, yeah. Like that, but you can put a lot of artifacts in there but yeah blue yeah. unlike green is not known for just ramping on its yeah own, so yeah you got like high tide and whatnot but yeah so so if i get that combo off like you deserve it at that point yeah you earned yeah. it right you work yeah. to it yeah you you wield everyone and whatnot yeah. and yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a great card. It's fun. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's one that I had never played against before, and actually never seen as a commander. And mm. It was a lot of fun playing against. I think Sweet. I played my Feldergriff deck. You, you know, did. You giving did. people hippos is fun, but yeah, yeah. frogs are <laughs> frogs are cool too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. All right. Well, I think that's all we have today. Thank you for joining, Sweet. Daniel. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun having you on. Uh, before we leave, just a couple of quick things. Again, if you could like, share, subscribe, uh, whether on uh, YouTube or if you're uh, listening to us on the podcast, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Again, uh, follow those, like and review. 
Really appreciate it. All the small things really help. Uh, if you're going to buy any decks or any individual cards, again, just using those affiliate links. I'm going to include the easy one right here. But again, there are plenty of them in the descriptions, depending on what episode it is. So I think it's bit.ly slash commanders quarters is the easy one. Um, again, every single uh, little bit helps in kind of improving the quality of the show improving the studio. Um, it just, it really helps. Um, so again, thank you to everyone who's helped so far. Um, play mats and merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Uh, again, got the golden pig play mat, not made with any real gold, uh, but there is a gold piggy on there. Um, again, every little bit goes back in helping the show. So thank you to everyone who's bought one so far. Um, it really does help. I want one. <laughs> you, you will have one. No. <laughs> um, and then, uh, the Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash, I believe it's the, no, it's just commander's quarters or the commander's quarters. Anyway, I'll have the link right here. <laughs> Don't hold me to it. Uh, but again, thank you so much to all the patrons who've been helping support the show. I really could not have done any of this without you. I would not be here without you. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. Uh, and with that, uh, I think we're out of here. So thank you again, Daniel. Yeah. And um, have a good one. See ya.